14 minutes before the hour. Good morning. It's Morning Air on Relevant Radio and the Relevant Radio app. Brand new Glenn Story Corner coming up in the next 10 minutes. How many of you go to a traditional Latin mass in your community, in your diocese? We're going to talk about that right now with Father Zachary Akers, who is the Director of Development for the Priestly Fraternity of St. Peter. It's an international society of priests that was founded by Pope St. John Paul II in 1988, the purpose to preserve the liturgical traditions of the church. And in just 30 years, this fraternity now numbers over 400 members serving in over 200 locations around the world. We're going to talk about the traditional traditional Latin Mass. Father Zachary, good morning. Welcome. Good morning, John. Thanks for having me on. We have the traditional Latin Mass. It's every Friday afternoon at 2 o'clock in the extraordinary form. And you think, well, wait a minute. Who would go to a Mass at 2 o'clock on a Friday afternoon? You would be surprised (laughs) as I was counting the heads uh, over 100 last Friday. And let's just take it outside of Lent. Those numbers are there as well. So there is, uh, and for those of us who are baby boomers who grew up from the traditional, the days of the traditional Latin Mass to the quote-unquote new Mass, uh, Mm -hmm. there's, there's truly a beauty in the extraordinary form of the Mass that's celebrated, isn't there? Yes, and we see especially it's really uh, popular nowadays among uh, younger people. You know, Why is that? Age. Why do you think? Yeah, you know, I, you know, I've been thinking about this quite a bit because as I travel around the different parishes all throughout the country of our fraternity, yeah, it's mostly young families with with large families, um, many kids, many of them are homeschooled, and you know because they want something that is uh, something solid and something that is faithfully Catholic. And you see this in a non-compromised way um, at, at the Latin Mass, of course, at, at the ordinary form as well. Um, but I think especially young families are attracted to this uh, for their families. And thanks be to God for that. Um, next door neighbor of mine, it's a young family um, in their late 30s. They have four beautiful boys, all of whom go to private Catholic school. And uh, and they, too, talk about uh, the extraordinary form, uh, the Mass in the extraordinary form, and uh, they try to get to her. You know, one member of the family, either the husband or the wife, tries to get to that Mass at, at our parish. We're in the same parish on a Friday afternoon. And that, and that really is making a sacrifice when you look at uh, the fact that mom's taking care of children and dad is working. Working, but we're seeing a lot of people making that sacrifice in terms of the traditional Latin Mass, which was kind of poo-pooed by some. It's like, oh, there are those Latin Mass people over there. And I think now we're, thanks be to the Holy Spirit, opening our, our minds to the beauty of celebrating Mass. First if, first of all, celebrated at Orientum, and now we're seeing that in, in the, quote, English Mass. Yes. Yes, and I'm impressed when I, when I, when I see certain, uh, priests throughout the, the country in certain dioceses like Lincoln, Nebraska, mm-hmm. where in the ordinary form, this is a very common thing to have mass ad orientum. Right. In my own, right. my own home diocese in Arlington, Virginia, uh, there, there's quite a few priests who are, uh, saying mass ad orientum. And I think it really, as Pope Benedict, uh, said and, and showed by his example, you know, to, to, to better focus on our Lord. That was his big theme, uh, John, I, I'm sure, uh, you know, seeking the face of our Lord and, and facing him together. So it's a beautiful, uh, rich tradition. Are you seeing, Father, increased reverence where uh, the, the Latin Mass has either returned or, or stayed on? Yes. In fact, uh, many of our parishes, you know, we have the extraordinary form only at our at our parishes. And... Um, People do people do kind of remark upon their first visit that there's there's so much more reverence um, or there's such a sense of the sacred um, by not just uh, not just the posture of the people but by the architecture in, in trying to make it a sacred space whether it be by the music or uh, by you know the, the, the different attitudes uh, that we see uh, from from the people themselves and this carries over I'm sure uh, into the ordinary form as well. We're talking about celebrating Mass in the extraordinary form, the Latin Mass today. Do you go to a Latin Mass? 877-766-3777. Do you go to a traditional Latin Mass in your parish, in your diocese? 877-766-3777. Why do you go? What attracts you to the traditional Latin Mass? 877-766-3777. And I noticed one thing, Father, in going to in going to the Latin Mass. I don't know Latin, but uh, I think I, I took it for like a semester 
as a freshman in high school, and that's about it. But the more the more you get into it, you start understanding Latin, and then you want to go and learn more. And uh, through a combination of just uh, sources available on the internet and also practicing that, you, you really can start to teach yourself a little bit of basic Latin to follow along in the Mass. Exactly. And, and if think, think of it back in the day where if this was the Mass that, that you were uh, every day or, you know, certainly once a week, that you would hear these same prayers, the Roman canon in Latin or the Pater Noster, uh, the certain, the ordinary uh, parts of the Mass, uh, these, you know, certainly these become part of you. And whether or not you know every single word, certainly uh, this, this, this becomes a deep part of your uh, of your prayer and worship to God. I don't mean to, yeah, I was going to say, I don't mean to sound pop culture like, but there's also, and, and, I, and I'm sure many of our relevant radio listeners who do go to the traditional Latin mass feel this, this sense of mystery, if you will, in the best sense of that, in not understanding Latin completely, but also a feeling of understanding the message at the same time. Exactly. And we see this, uh, oftentimes people will ask me, um, well, I'm, I'm about to go to uh, an extraordinary form mass for the very first time, what should I do? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think the best thing is just to, uh, just to observe, well, to, to observe and pray. Um, not try to figure out every little detail. Why, why did he wear that little maniple on his left arm, or why did he turn that way? No, that'll come in time, but just mm-hmm. to realize that this is a, this is a very uh, ancient form of the mass. That remains for us uh, a very uh, beautiful uh, and valid uh, way of worshiping. You know, as what Pope Benedict said, what was what was uh, beautiful and and true and good and uh, for our for for past generations remains so for us. And so this is a. Uh, I just encourage people to 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 try to experience it. You know, at least once and really try to to pray the mass. And you know, of course, most of the parts of the mass are. Um, are, are the same, the same kind of structure, right. just v- little variants. John is joining us this morning at 877-766-3777. We're talking about uh, the traditional Latin Mass and why you go to Mass. John, good morning. Welcome to Morning Air. Why do you go to the traditional Latin Mass in your parish or your diocese? Hey, my name is Charlie. Charlie, I'm sorry. I was looking at, uh, uh, sorry about that. That's all right. Well, I just wanted, um, out there in, in the Archdiocese of North, where I'm at, they have Latin Mass, 9 a.m. at St. Anthony's of, in Jersey City every Sunday. I wish the Latin Mass was available in every parish. Slowly, that is one of my prayers. Slowly but surely, it will be coming back. But I just wanted to throw that out there. Also, Holy Innocence in New York City on 37th. The Latin Mass is every day at 6 o'clock. Anyone wants to ever experience the wonder is truly heaven on earth. It's that that is back. beautifully said. That is inspired, Charlie. Thank you so much for our listeners in the New York area. Thank there you. are a couple of destinations, Charlie. Thank you very much. And for those of us uh, who still have our old St. Joseph missiles that uh, we take with you to the traditional Latin Mass with the English on one side and the Latin on the other. If not, I'm sure you can probably get some of those up on eBay to really understand the beauty of the extraordinary form of the Mass celebrated in Latin. I'm sure your diocese on the diocesan website will have a list of parishes that uh, celebrate the Mass in the Extraordinary Form. Check that out. If not, just you know, give a call to your parish, give a call to your diocese to find out where Mass is celebrated in Latin to really appreciate the beauty of the Mass celebrated in Latin, Mass celebrated in the Extraordinary Form. Father Zachary Akers, the Director of Development for the Priestly Fraternity of St. Peter. Thank you for your time, Father. And if you're in the New, if you're in the New York area sometime, just look us up and uh, if you got a Friday afternoon at 2 o'clock, I'll take you to Mass at the Basilica of St. John, okay? Great. Sounds great. Thanks Thanks so much, Father Zachary. We appreciate your time. Time now is four minutes before the hour. Next hour, we check in with our Wednesday Lenten group on their journey with Father Marcel Tyone. But right now, it's time for Glenn's Story Corner.